Hello guys, this is Code and Code, and this is the video editorial for the problem, or sorry, for the implementation of Dijkstra's algorithm. In the previous lecture, I have already explained how Dijkstra's algorithm works. So in this lecture, we are going to implement Dijkstra's algorithm using priority queue. There are many ways you can implement Dijkstra's algorithm. One way is to use set, uh, but we are going to use priority queue. So the problem statement was clear from the previous lecture as well that we are given a graph weighted graph where each edge is having certain weight and we are given a source vertex we have to find the minimum distance the shortest distance from source vertex to every other vertex so uh the, for the example problem this is the solution assuming node 1 is the source vertex so node 1 is at distance 0 from itself is at distance 2 from oh sorry distance 3 from node 2 so you see the distance between node 1 and 2 is f of length 3 you see from node 1 you can go to 6 and then you can go to node 2 so this is the distance array and this is the final result what we want so to implement Dijkstra's algorithm we are going to use of course priority queue first thing that you would see uh, from previous lectures uh, the change that you would see is that this time we won't use vector of int uh, as adjacency list but this time we are going to use vector of pair because now we don't uh, we don't we just don't have to store that uh, node 1 is connected to node 5 and 6 but also we have to store node 1 is connected to node 2 with distance this so we need to store two things first the node itself and the weight of the edge that is why this time uh, we are not taking vector of int but vector of pair now we are taking input n and m which are number of nodes and number of edges for each uh, this is input for edges edges are given in the form of a and b that is a is connected to b with edge w this is still an undirected graph for directed graph you would simply remove sorry you would simply remove this line but i am assuming this is an undirected graph so in the adjacency list of a we would insert b comma w indicating a is connected to node b with an edge whose weight is w and b is connected to node a with an edge whose weight is w so this is the input for the adjacency list now we need a priority queue and this is the declaration of priority queue now declaration of priority queue priority queue is simple it just requires this suppose i wanted a priority queue in which i need to store integer only but the problem with this declaration is that now the priority queue uh, is actually a max heap what what I mean by max heap, uh, most of you might know. A max heap is a uh, is a data structure in which the top of the queue contains the maximum element. So uh, since in the previous lecture I have explained in in each iteration we would take out that element from the uh, from the priority queue from from the back which is which is having least value by weight. So we want min heap not the max heap so the way you declare a uh, min heap is this first you tell what element you want to store we, we want to st uh, store pair because the label if you remember from the previous lecture uh, was a pair first value was the weight second value was the node itself that is why we want to store pair and then the second arg argument is vector of the element which you want to store so we want to store pair that is why second argument is vector of pair and then the third argument is actually a comparator you can define your own uh, comparator but since there already exist one so I'm, i'll be using that now uh, you write greater and again in the in square brackets you pass the element which we are storing in the priority queue which is pair so this is how you define a min heap or min priority queue now the top of the priority queue would contain the element which is uh, smallest by first value if the, there are multiple elements which are having having same values same first value then the tie is broken by the second value now what we do we need a distance array that is why we, i've taken a, a vector of size n plus one so that we have indices from one to n and initialize all of the elements all of the distance with infinity inf inf is a number i've already defined to be transpar nine the inf or the distance that you take must be that number which cannot be a, a, a path sum of any path now i am assuming that the pa maximum path length uh, is smaller than 10 to the power 9 that is why i can take infinity to be 10 to the power 9 
and infinity would indicate that this node is not reachable from the source node suppose in a graph uh, 1 and 2 are disconnected source node is 1 then node 2 is not reachable from node 1 that is why the distance of node 2 must be something which indicates that node 2 is not reachable that is why I have taken infinity which would indicate if the distance of some node is infinity that means this node is not reachable from the source node and this is the initialization phase in, in initialization phase if you remember even in the uh, BFS what you do you insert the source vertex into the queue and then mark it as visited this is uh, or level or you define the level of that node to be zero this is exactly what we are doing here we are inserting the label of the source node since source node is having distance zero because uh, source node a is at distance zero from itself that is why the distance of source node is zero and the label would be distance of source node comma source node this is the initialization phase after that we run a while loop while q is not empty we take the top element which is the smallest by weight the so the top element is the smallest in the priority queue and the second value we store is the node that is why current indicates the current node and the first value is actually the weight so current d is the current distance of the path and then you of course remove that uh, label from the priority queue after that in the adjacency list of current node which are directly connected to it uh, if you remember from the lecture we take this node and then we try to minimize the distance of every other node which is directly connected to it so what we are doing we are traversing the adjacency list of the current current node and in the since the adjacency list now stores a pair that is why we are taking out pair h dot first contains if you remember h dot first contains the node and second contains the uh, weight of the edge so we insert the new uh, uh, new label into the priority queue if the current uh, the current distance plus the weight of the edge is smaller than the current distance of of this node this di uh, connected uh, this node if you are if current node is say one and then this is the node which is directly connected to it and if its current distance is greater than the current distance of node 1 plus this uh, edge edge weight so if current distance of the this node is greater than the current path distance plus edge weight then we are going to update the current distance uh, distance of the of the edge or uh, which is sorry distance of the node which is directly connected to current node so we will update distance of that node to be current distance plus uh, edge length and then we are also going to insert this label in the priority queue all of this i have explained in the previous lecture so after all of this runs now the distance of i represents the distance of each node from source node now there are optimization that you can make uh, if you remember the uh, there was an, uh, something that we discussed in the previous lecture that the labels may be outdated you can optimize this to indicate uh, to detect whether the current label this the top which indicates the current label is outdated or not you can optimize it yourself so this was all for this lecture if you have any query oh let me just just show you uh, after running this so this just a second this is the input i have already stored there are six nodes So for this graph, there are six nodes and nine edges, and this is the input of it. So if you run it, you see the source node, which is node one, is having distance zero. Or uh, node two is at distance two, and node three is eight, fourteen, eleven, and two. So this is how you apply Dijkstra's algorithm. This was all for this lecture. Thank you guys for watching. Until the next video drops, keep coding. Thank you.